welcome to the very first Salesforce Weekly video post on the eve of Lightning Developer Week. So this week there's meetups taking place around the world in many different cities, probably in a city near you, for admins, developers, anyone that wants to learn more about Lightning and get the chance to go hands-on with the different Lightning features. One of the Lightning features is the Lightning Process Builder, and that's what I'm going to take you through today. Okay, we're going to start off with a very simple example. This is an opportunity, and I'm hovering over the opportunity stage history, which gives us the history of the different stages that this opportunity has gone through, what the previous stage was, and various bits of information like that. So we're going to take this example, but we're going to do something very similar on the leads. Okay, so what have we got here? I'm just going to go into a lead. So I've already created some of the fields that we need, but I'm just going to show you what they are. Okay, so we've got three fields. We've got a lead, last lead status change date, which you'll see when we build our process. Into here we're going to put the date that the lead status was changed. We then got a formula field. Okay, the formula field is going to work its magic. It's basically going to calculate the time between now and the last lead status change date. And then it's going to use that to populate our lead status history table, which we use the process builder for. For the purposes of this example, so that you can see the results, I'm just going to calculate the lead stage status duration in um, minutes. Obviously, you probably do this in days, maybe hours. So here's the formula for that. Okay. Then we've got another field, which is our old lead status. So those are our three fields. Don't necessarily need to display them on the lead. They're just there to facilitate the process. Before I go into the process builder, there's one other thing I need to show you. We've got a workflow rule. Fortunately, the process builder is new. There's not, sorry, unfortunately, where process builder is still relatively new, there's certain things that you can't yet do with process builder. So we need to rely on the old trusty workflow rules. So here I've got a simple workflow rule that basically just tracks any change in the status and it sets that value in my in my custom field here. So it's pretty pretty basic stuff. Okay, so let's let's glue this together now using the process builder. Okay, so let's find where process builder is. So in the setup menu, I'm just going to type process and it sits under here under the workflow and approvals and here is process builder. So I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to hit blue button, give my process a name. So let's call this track lead status history. Seems appropriate. Grab that. All right, so this then drops me into the canvas for the process builder, which is a little bit different to the flow one if you've seen flow. Flow, you, have, you start with a blank canvas and you have to drag on the various elements and then piece it all together. Whereas Process Builder, as it eventually will replace Workflow Rules Engine, it's a little bit more structured, which makes it a lot easier to, to understand because the flow is already determined for you. So where do we start? So we've got to start here, and the first thing we need to do, that's already telling us what we, what we should be doing, is we want to add an object. So what object do we want here? So I think we want the lead object. So I'm just typing in lead, and it brings up everything that begins with the word lead. If I didn't do that, I could just hit the drop down, scroll down and find lead. Okay. Then we have a choice here, how we want to start the process. It's a bit like the choices you get on the workflow rules, create, create or edit, or create or edit where it doesn't subsequently meet the criteria, something like that. So exactly the same kind of thing. So here we're tracking every time 
the need status is changed, so we want it when a record is created or edited. Okay, that's all we need to worry about for this example. I'm just going to click Save, and then it replaces the Add Object with Lead. Very simple stuff. So the next thing we need to do as we come down is we need to add the criteria. So this is the criteria that it's either going to be true or false, and that's you know that's probably one of the big differences between this and Flow. It, this is quite linear. Obviously, you can build up a number of different conditions here, but the, once it goes down a true path, that's where it will end. Okay, so it's important to understand that. So let's give this a name, criteria name. I'm going to call this status change, and then. Criteria for executing actions, filter conditions are met. So this one's going to be very simple. I'm going to hit the drop down and look for our lead status. Now, exactly the same as with the objects, I can start typing it, which just speeds up the process of finding fields. So I'm just going to type status, and then it gives me all the things that have the word status in it. So uh, standard lead status field is status, and then once I select that, it just gives me a preview of what it is and what the API name is, and it's a pick list. So we know that's our standard field. Okay, so that drops in nicely. The operator, so this is where we need to say, okay, the lead status is changing. So we now have an is changed operator, which is new for spring 15. So what I want to say here is I want to say true. So if you think about how you would have done that, in fact, how I did that with my change tracking the old status I was doing is changed in a in a formula. You can still do that in here, but you know we've tried to make it really easy, and that's why we can we can do this kind of thing here. And that's all we really need at this stage. There's some other things in here, but. I'll save those for other video posts in the future to go through more complex stuff. So now I'm just going to say save. All right, so that's lead. So we start here, we go in through the lead object every time it's edited. And then we've got our criteria here. And next we need to come on to the immediate actions. So this is where we're going to start to to do some clever things that you couldn't do before with the old workflow rules. Obviously you can do it with Flow or with Apex Trigger, but that's kind of defeating the object. We want to try and do as much as we can using the new process builder. So the first thing I want to do here is set the status change day. So the big difference between the workflow rules and process builder is you've now got all these extra options available to you. So the one we're going to pick for this is the update records. Okay, I'm going to give my action a name. I'm going to call it set old. Sorry, set lead status change date. And the object I want is the lead object. Now this is where you have to be a little bit clever. See what I just did there? I just clicked on the word lead, which means I want to update the same object. Um, you've probably spent <laughs> a couple of times trying to figure that out. So if you want to use this to update fields on the same object, that's the trick. Okay, so set object variables. This, all this really means is what fields do we want to set? So I'm going to pick our custom field, which is last lead status change date. And I'm now going to enter a value. Well, I'm not going to enter a value. I'm going to use a value I know that gives me the current date and time. And for that, I'm going to click this and change to my field picker. And I'm going to search for last modified date. Which is actually date time. Those of you that are wondering why did he pick a date time field on his custom field and just not a date field. Well, that's on purpose so that I can actually use the last modified date, which is actually date time. All right, so I'm going to click Save. So that's the first thing. I'm going to use that 
to populate. So I'm going to use Process Builder to populate the last modified into there. And then it's going to obviously run my formula, which gives me the time between the last date and the current modified date. Sorry, it gives me the time duration between now and the value that's in that field, which in this case will be the last modified date. So every time it's changed, I've got that date stamp. Okay, so now we need another action. So I'm going to go add action. This time, I'm going to pick create a record. I'm going to call this create lead status history. I'm going to find an object. So here we're going to pick our new custom object, which is related to our lead object. So we pick that. And then the next thing we need to do is, is add fields. So this is where we need to populate our lead lookup with the lead ID. So I'm just switching between entry and picker. So then I'm going to find my lead ID. I'm just going to type lead can see that it's correct by the API name. So that links it to that. Then I'm going to find my lead status duration. This is where I want my formula. So I'm going to change to the picker again. Uh, and call this lead status duration. There it is. A couple more fields. New lead status. So into here, I'm going to track the current status that it's switching to. So hit the picker. I just want status. Almost there. Now I want to track what the old one is. So this is in fact this is where old workflow rules meets new process builder to create this bit of magic. So I'm now going to find my old lead status. And that's everything that I need. So just check that. So action type, create a record. Yes, we're creating an entry in that table. Action name, it's just the name we've given it. And the object is our new custom object. And then we've got our fields. So we've got the ID, which makes the link to the parent, to the parent record, which is the lead itself. And then we've got our three fields. Just going to click save. So we're almost there. So just a quick recap. So our process starts here. It's on the lead object. It's every time it's created or edited. And where the lead status is changing. That's the important bit there. Then we come down the true path and we've got some actions. So the first thing we're doing is we're recording the last lead status change date using our last modified date. Then our second action, we're using it to create our lead history, uh, sorry, our lead status record. Just save that again to be sure. So now we're ready to activate our flow. Sorry, flow, crikey, I've been doing so much flow. Our process builder, or our process. So I'm going to click OK. And then that's activated. It now goes read only. So if we wanted to change this, we'd have to clone it. So I'm just going to come out of here, come back to our main Salesforce UI. Let's find a lead. I'm going to pick Chris Edwards. All right, so are we feeling like this is going to work? Let's just actually quickly just check that our workflow is also enabled. Yes, it is, right. So here we go, let's test this. So we've got no lead status history. Chris Edwards at Eclipse is now working, contacted. So I'm gonna change the lead status and I'm gonna click save. <coughs> All right, so let's have a look. So these are our fields, so they've changed. So previously it was old, not contacted, and there's the the last modified date in there, which you can see. But here, 
we have our lead history. So five minutes have passed since I originally set this up. So let's just do it again. Let's go closed, converted. Is it quite a minute? I'll just give that a minute. There we go. So it's one minute in there now. Obviously, if it was days, then yeah, it'd be zero. But yeah, I picked minutes just so that we can see the example. So let's just push that forward to close converted. We get another history. Yeah, and we get the time now tracked in there and also the old and new status. There you go. So that's the very first Salesforce Weekly video post. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah. See you soon.